Cam, um, I want to talk to you today about um, a new approach to the management of diabetes. It should be obvious to all of us that uh, this uh, now almost global epidemic of the disease uh, is one which um, hasn't been treated, uh, or at least uh, hasn't been handled as well as it might be. Um, we all know that type 2 diabetes, for example, was an unknown, unknown disease about 100 years ago, and in some parts of the world, some of the population now has 70% uh, incidence of diabetes in, the, say, the groups of people over 50. So if you go to Ahmedabad in India and some parts of the Middle East, we're now finding uh, the incidence of diabetes as high as 60%. I suppose one could say it's one of the great American exports. Uh, the diet that we uh, eventually developed through the last 50 years in the U.S. has absolutely contributed to this uh, epidemic and we've successfully exported this uh, to the rest of the world. So the conventional treatments, of course, uh, rely mostly for type 2 diabetes on some sort of uh, medication, whether it's a glitazone or gliburide or glucophage or whatever that might be. Um, obviously, for type 1 diabetics, uh, it's obviously insulin uh, that uh, is the mainstay of therapy. But the epidemic that we're looking at really is uh, type 2 diabetes. And one should uh, be well aware uh, with patients that you have that complications of diabetes go on regardless of how we treat them. And that's why uh, the uh, renal uh, uh, units are full of people who are going into renal failure. The number of people on dialysis keeps increasing every year. Half the people in the United States on dialysis are there because of diabetes. There are uh, 82,000 amputations performed in the U.S. every year because of it. And I'll show you some other figures later on that are quite startling. So I want you to start thinking about how we can manage this in a, a, a prospective, aggressive manner uh, that lies outside of uh, conventional medicine, which is what medicine typically does, is allows a problem to occur and then tries to treat it. Uh, clearly, diabetes can be prevented. Uh, type 2 diabetes can be largely prevented. Uh, and we need some other tools in the armamentarium to try and help uh, get the incidence of this pretty dreadful disease down. Just to give you an example right now, there are about 380 million people in the world uh, with diabetes, and it's increasing, depending on the country, at the rate of 7 to 10 percent a year. Um, there are almost 4 million deaths worldwide because of this disease, and you can see that the numbers are just going to keep going up and up and eat dread. Uh, drastically into the uh, health care bill. Now, Professor Paul Zimmert, who is a fellow Australian um, and is the chairman of the uh, International Diabetes Federation Task Force on Epidemiology, made this statement last year where he said this is the first generation where children may die before their parents. Um, if we look at uh, the problem, which is enormous, we see that in people who've had diabetes for 10 years, almost two-thirds of them have at least one complication, if not two. Uh, and that wasn't known until recently. I think it was probably known, but not in a scientifically acknowledged manner, until this was published uh, in Endocrinology this year. And if you look at the healthcare costs in the year 2002, you can see that the bill then was $132 billion in the US for just treating this disease. The estimate now is something like $200 billion. Notice that almost 60% of that is due to hospital uh, admissions, and uh, that becomes an important uh, aspect as we go on in this discussion. Uh, just to put some things in perspective for you, there are 300,000 deaths per year. That's one every 30 seconds. This is US. 82,000 amputations each year. 24,000 people go blind. 12 million people have visual impairment as a result of glucose intolerance. 50,000 people go into, cardiac, uh, in, sorry, into renal failure every year and half of those people are on uh, dialysis because of diabetes, and 44,000 people die from renal disease every year because of this disease. It's, it's absolutely staggering. There's a picture of a normal retina on the uh, uh, left-hand side and what you sort of see in a typical person uh, with diabetic retinopathy. Uh, there's the 45,000 people developing renal failure. And just to let you know, every 30 seconds around the world, someone loses a part of a limb or a whole limb uh, because of this disease. And this was published in the Los Angeles Times not too long ago, uh, Wednesday, July the 4th, actually, last year, showing that the prosthetics business is blooming uh, because of this disease. And we know that cardiovascular disease um, complicates diabetics, um, in fact, is the 
um, main cause of death. 65% of diabetics die as a result of uh, cardiovascular disease. 73% have hypertension. Well, how can this be? We've had modern medicine around a long time. We've got all these wonderful drugs. The glitazones, despite their failings, have uh, gained in popularity. Uh, insulin has been around for over 60 years, and yet we still have um, all these complications occurring. Now, up until about the mid-1980s, most people believed that if we could control blood sugars, we were able to control all the complications of diabetes. Uh, diabetes was seen to be a disease of just abnormal blood sugars. And what I'm hoping you'll leave with today is that it is far from that. Um, abnormal blood sugars are simply a consequence of what happens in this disease and is not the primary cause of the disease. If we take studies from the USA, the UK and Japan and aggregate the studies that were done during the 1980s and 1990s, we find almost 30,000 people were treated for 10 years and with very strict controls. These weren't patients who were just on typical um, diabetic uh, treatment. These were people who were followed up with nurse practitioners or nurses almost on a weekly basis to make sure that their uh, blood sugars were under control. They had regular physician vis visits, regular hemoglobin A1Cs uh, when those became available. And at the end of that, the conclusion was that tight control didn't prevent 25 to 40 percent of diabetic complications from occurring at the end of a 10-year period, and about 58 percent of the diabetics had at least, as you, as you heard, um, one or more complication after a number of years as well. The worst part is that tight control of diabetes is contraindicated as complications become more and more severe, uh, simply because the, uh, their intolerance to uh, insulin administration causes hypoglycemia, and with hypoglycemic unawareness also becoming a problem as the progression of the disease takes place in type 1 diabetics, um, it just makes it more and more difficult to keep this disease um, under control at all, and therefore the blood sugar levels rise even further. Now, I just want to focus your attention for a moment on where uh, we're going to go with uh, the future with this disease. I'm talking a little bit about the future now before I tell you the whole story, but um, this is integral to putting this all in perspective. You know, once upon a time we thought that it was insulin and glucagon uh, released from the pancreas that simply uh, controlled blood sugars, and if those things were in balance and the blood sugar was in balance, then everything would be okay. You just heard that's not true. And we're now beginning to learn that there are so many other factors that control blood sugar levels. For example, uh, glucagon-like peptide and gastric inhibitory peptide are two hormones that are released from the gut. Uh, they occur when we eat food. Um, the gastric inhibitory peptide helps delay in gastric emptying, and all this is helping us uh, keep our uh, blood sugar levels low, so we slow down the absorption of carbohydrate. 